Welcome to a special BQ Prime series of conversations with leading BFSI and technology leaders to foster and extend conversations on challenges faced by this very important sector, especially in the post-pandemic scenario. This series is brought to you in association with Oracle. The aim of this series is to increase awareness and define the way forward to critical areas that govern the BFSI space. And these are areas like data insights, customer experience, risk, as well as security concerns around data and prevention of fraud. And of course, the very big issue of cloud and multi-cloud. Today, we have with us one of India's most eminent business technology leaders, Mr. Shiv Kumar Basin, who is the Chief Technology and Operations Officer at the National Stock Exchange of India, better known as NSE. Thank you so much for being here with us, Mr. Basim. Thank you, Ivan. Sir, even as I begin, uh, of course, you know, the pandemic is uh, front and center here. Uh, still, it's uh, while uh, we, we are hopefully seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but it's uh, still very much around. Now, while it certainly wasn't beneficial for the world, it did provide a catalyst for digital transformation. And as many CIOs put it, what they could not achieve in years had to happen in weeks because of the dire necessity to, to transform extremely rapidly. So from your experience during this, what do you see as key for digital uh, transformation success in the financial services industry? Especially, you know, where digital is uh, front and center now, but, but there is still the challenge of uh, stop and uh, start uh, economies. See, uh, I think uh, uh, there have been the uh, lot of uh, foundational work has gone in for making various business processes uh, digital. And I think we are uh, very, very lucky uh, uh, being Indian that in this country, uh, some of the digital infrastructure, uh, the initiatives had been taken by the government. And I am indicating towards the complete Aadhaar stack, uh, you know, of the digitization. Uh, that has uh, brought in some of the compliance processes much more simpler, uh, you know, be they are uh, KYC for the banks, be they are KYC for uh, other government services, uh, you know, or KYC of exchange or KYC of the brokers, uh, you know, all these fronts, uh, the digitization, uh, which Aadhaar stack has, uh, uh, you know, brought in. The Aadhaar India stack uh, has been the key, uh, I should say, the uh, engine or the uh, kind of a which has ignited the, uh, uh, you know, the, it, the kind of a fuel uh, for uh, going towards uh, reinventing the uh, existing business processes and re-looking at the legacy business processes from the new angle that how the uh, processes need to be, uh, uh, you know, looked at while keeping the customer at the center and making their lives much more simpler. And that is where when you are asking that uh, when all the people are, all the F uh, FSIs are looking for digital transformation, one of the key is that for each of their process, they must have to keep the customer at the center. While keeping customer at the center, the journey, which the process, which uh, which is currently existing, it does not need to be migrated, uh, you know, as a digital digitalization process. Where a lot of FSIs are making uh, that mistake as well that they are looking at the current processes wherever the paper processes are involved. They are converting only those steps to the digital so that uh, according to probably their thought process, this is a, uh, you know, area where they can make the process online. Uh, India uh, has been very, very fortunate uh, in terms of uh, government initiative of uh, making the uh, Aadhaar stack made available to the fintechs uh, as well as for the wider uh, you know, industries, uh, be they are banking, telecom, or any other, uh, you know, government or civil uh, uh, citizen services, uh, which have uh, made uh, their the lives uh, for the various uh, uh, 
situations for the customers much more simpler uh, uh, and uh, consequently for the digital banking services uh, this has been a big boom for uh, leveraging uh, aadhar uh, as a kyc as a uh, identity uh, infrastructure and uh, Uh, rendering the various services, be they are uh, payments or be they are uh, various kinds of uh, credit requirements, and all these uh, various use cases uh, or customer journeys have been digitized uh, and reinvented uh, in a uh, much different manner, keeping the customer at the center. While, uh, uh, as I was alluding earlier. if any banks are trying to migrate their existing business uh, processes where there are any paper based process steps or manual processes are there or manual maker checkers are there and they are merely converting them uh, into the digital uh, steps uh, making them paperless or making them real time online straight through so those processes are not really resulting into the digital transformation of the organization it is merely a digitalization uh, maybe uh, reducing the uh, some of the uh, hops and some of the uh, tags are getting improved some of the middleman are uh, getting vanished but there is a need uh, for the right digital transformation of the fsi industry the business processes need to be completely reimagined and reinvented keeping the customer at center thank you for those insights sir uh, i wanted to ask you next now what would you say to bfsr leaders who want to do this and who want to really go beyond paperless to really drive complete transformation and to that to deliver business uh, transformation uh because especially today post the pandemic there are vast new opportunities uh, for instance customers are far more amenable to digital as compared to earlier uh if you take banking before the pandemic customers weren't as comfortable with digital online kyc today it's the norm uh and you know they actually prefer that today nobody wants to go to a branch they prefer it if it can be uh, done online so from your rich experience what would you say to business leaders who want to completely transform and take this massive leap towards digital transformation in this post pandemic new normal so as i uh, was uh, you know telling in my previous uh, point i think first of all uh, you know they uh, have to really uh, think uh, that uh, it has to be a new initiative uh, which has to be developed ground up so which means that uh, uh, they have to start thinking like a uh, you know startup or a fintech organization would uh, uh, talk about any product which they are trying to develop and once they conceptualize that these are my top 10 or top 5 uh, business processes are uh, which i am going to uh, uh, take for the digital initiative they have to uh, first select them they cannot uh, go uh, i would encourage them that they go with a agile approach number one and they select uh, maybe there are top 100 processes but not going after top 100 all together going in a bunch of uh, say top 5 at a time and releasing as a minimum viable product and over a, a series of releases uh you know addressing the entire 100 processes and even the top 5 processes could be uh, released as a minimum viable product like if you go back and look at the uh, analogy of apple phone when it started way back in the mid uh, 2000 uh, uh, to 2010 time frame since then to now in last 14 15 years uh from phone 1 to now phone 11 or 12 where we are actually so uh i think this is where the right analogy is for the financial services industry as well they have to start what are my uh you know the key business processes 
and then move them into the smaller bunches and go for the uh, agile way and then second part uh, as we were uh, talking about that they have to uh, look at the customer at the center of everything and look at if customer has to uh, buy a product using various instruments of the bank how that uh, journey will be carried out once that journey in a day to day life of the customer gets plotted then it needs to be solutionized and uh, if we merely go and look at the existing processes and converting them into the digital they will again not address the uh, customer needs and they will not be the digital organization with a differentiation uh, so uh, they have to think about uh, setting uh, as a different business unit or a setting as a different digital uh, department first of all and bringing the people who can uh, look at uh, you know the reimagine the business processes and then going to the technology teams and the in the with the technology teams as well uh, uh, working in a garage mode uh, where the business and technology co create and after co creation the things need to be uh, reimagined as a minimum viable product and then going for the advanced versions thank you for sharing those insights sir uh, while msc is definitely one of asia's top exchanges and technology has been at the heart of it uh, i wanted to find out you know how you at msc are leveraging some of these agile approaches and uh, perhaps even you know where you all are functioning in startup modes like uh, you know startups in the fintech sector leveraging devops etc how have you all used this approach to drive innovation despite your size Yes, see, uh, NSC has been, uh, you know, uh, a, around 25 year old institution, but all these years it has been a very much uh, operating model as a startup. Uh, as you know, as last 18 months itself are the uh, kind of a right witness where the volumes have grown six to seven times. Uh, from the time we uh, got into this pandemic and uh, now to address all these large uh, transactions and order volumes uh, we need to have our systems uh, scalable fault tolerant resilient avoiding any kind of a uh, outages as well uh, so keeping all these uh, challenges uh, which uh, it is not only just one solution that you uh, you know throw the uh, hardware and uh, uh, and make it uh, scale uh, by throwing the more and more money and more and more hardware. It is uh, also the uh, making the existing platform much more proficient, much more nimbler so that they can process the transaction faster and they can process the transactions in a large number. So the throughput of the systems uh, go up, which requires a uh, continuous performance uh, engineering, uh, which is one of the key. So we have uh, we have a performance engineering team which always continuously looks for the opportunities that in the existing compute, how much more transactions can be churned out. Uh, I will give you one example uh, where apart from uh, working in an agile and a nimbler way uh, for improving the capacity planning, scalability, uh, and high availability of the platform. We had uh, really worked uh, in a record time for the fault tolerance uh, and resiliency of the platform, where if there is a any uh, problem which is being experienced at a production uh, platform, we can switch over to the disaster recovery in less than 45 minutes. And on ground, uh, you know, in day to day, our recurring, refining these processes, we are able to migrate from production to DR in less than 25 minutes, which have been the industry uh, record, not only in India, but across the globe, 
where you would have seen the many large financial services institutions had various disruptions in their channel applications or various exchanges you would have seen the outages across the globe and once they experienced the uh, any technical glitch there was a outage for the full day uh, and uh, where the regulatory requirements were to recover in uh, two hour or three hour or four hours uh, but while we have achieved uh, this uh, you know the target in less than uh, three months that uh, we have moved from four hours of uh, uh, switch over time to less than 45 minutes uh, of restoring the entire business operations uh, of the capital market of this country absolutely right sir uh, and, you know, I wanted to quickly come to cloud at this point because, you know, cloud is at the heart of innovation in any industry uh, today. Uh, in the financial services industry, how do you feel that organizations in the sector can benefit from adopting a multi-cloud approach? And what would be the best strategy, in your opinion, to take advantage of a multi-cloud model, uh, both from your experience and what you are doing at uh, NSC? See, in my experience, I think multi-cloud is the way to go because, uh, you know, uh, there, are, uh, uh, there, there are approaches where we can go for uh, one cloud service provider. Um, uh, they have certain strengths, uh, whether be it is an open source uh, stack of the applications, while you do use some of the proprietary, uh, you know, softwares as well which uh, given our, uh, uh, you know, financial services industry uh, is a really at an enterprise scale, uh, which requires the, you know, uh, proper support and resilient services, uh, which cannot rely on that everything has to be on a bleeding edge, uh, open source. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, unless they have a very in-house, very strong uh, engineering team, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, sometimes very hard to build uh, in every, uh, for every technology stack in the financial institution because the, your core business is to run the uh, business much more smoother manner. And uh, so given that, actually, you might have to go for some of the uh, technology specific uh, cloud service providers as well. Like uh, it could be a, the uh, database, uh, uh, you know, uh, specific uh, cloud service providers. And their clouds are also not only they uh, host their own products, uh, which are which give you a fully resilient architecture, but also uh, you can host uh, on those clouds uh, various other uh, cross-section of the technologies, uh, which are not, by uh, you know, kind of a binding with the same cloud service provider. So... What I'm trying to say that for uh, leveraging the strength of the uh, each cloud, you definitely need to adopt the uh, the multi-cloud approach. And uh, those uh, multi-cloud also uh, need to uh, need to be linked with the you know hybrid cloud, uh, and then the hybrid cloud. The other end is with the uh, private cloud. So you have a graduation that. Uh, you can seamlessly the fabric of your data center of from the private cloud could go to hybrid and from hybrid to the uh, you know the multi cloud so this gives you a full extensibility and full elasticity uh, uh, so so that you can uh, start uh, addressing the business problems uh, making the infrastructure available on demand at any point of time and fully resilient Thank you for sharing those uh, valuable uh, points, sir. Uh, one of the most important things also when it comes to the sector is really compliance. Uh, what has happened in the pandemic is obviously that regulatory regimes have gotten tighter and risk management has also become very, very important. And even more so now as we look towards a new uh, normal, uh, how can FSI organizations really stay on top of this challenge of tighter regulatory regimes, managing uh, uh, customer expectations and delivering the best for customers and the need for better risk management. Yeah, see, there, there are, uh, you know, uh, 
couple of things like uh, since we were uh, talking previously about the cloud uh, i would say uh, you know leveraging uh, the cloud for the digital transformation uh, of the business processes be those are uh, various fintech solutions which are based on aadhar stack uh, be those are various apis uh, whether they are for the uh, transaction uh, fraud detection for the aml checks or uh, or they are for the various kinds of background checks of the customers or trading members or clearing members or custodians uh, or they are as simple as uh, some of the uh, you know the uh, uh, ocr services uh, which uh, you know fetch the data and analyze the data on the cloud and give you the uh, using the uh, uh, you know very very highly specialized uh, uh, data analytics uh, uh, which gets carried out on the these cloud solutions and they are uh, given uh, to these apis for fulfilling the demands of the digital transformation of the complex business processes uh, for the capital market and the corporate banking etc or in the even in the lending areas as well uh, so uh, so they, there is a uh, you know uh, one of the key requirement uh, of the uh, from the regulatory perspective have been that these uh, services must be hosted on the cloud service providers where their availability zones are within the indian geography and this is one of the key and we have found uh, recently that uh, uh, you know the leading cloud service providers from uh, top 5 service uh, cloud service providers uh, most of them are bringing multi availability zones within india and that is one of the key for the core compliance the second big area which could be the uh, you know which was earlier used to be the one of the bone of the contention the cloud law and uh, which was uh, earlier used to be called 20 before 2015 the patriot law that uh, for the us government because most of the cloud service providers if you look the top 5 cloud service providers across the globe they are us mnc's and uh, as you have seen the it policy of the india and as you daily keep watching the various kinds of uh, you know twitter and facebook kind of debates uh, on the various news channels uh the way the data privacy and all uh, are being addressed uh and government is uh, very very heavy, heavy handed way they are asking these organizations to fall in the line uh so th- there is a uh, these cloud service providers some of them have taken the steps in advance to make these av- availability zones within india and they are by contractual obligations they are ensuring that none of the data is uh, you know uh, getting replicated outside the indian boundaries of the availability zones which brings the regulatory compliance my last question to you mr basim is on the future of work uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you see the future of work in this uh, highly regulated fsi sector and how it will look like in this uh, new normal and where is really digital transformation headed among banks and other financial uh, services players during this time i think uh, uh, in terms of now uh, as we see uh, post pandemic or uh, the, and and maybe possible the post pandemic phase is starting now uh, so uh, one i think uh, the workforce strategy uh, really uh, you know needs to be uh, looked upon uh, like when we went into the pandemic we looked at workforce strategy that uh, we almost uh, went close to the uh, you know 95% or 90% uh, work from uh, remote or work from home and uh, uh, and which was also achieved in a uh, you know in an incremental way Uh, when day one it happened we were not sure what will uh, you know uh, how we will be uh, running the uh, these enterprises and now uh, once we have gone up to the level where we can nearly uh, have uh, apart from most essential uh, services 
we can have everything uh, all employees even the data center could be run with a zero staff uh, you know nearly zero staff uh, from remote uh, and we have run the exchange successfully my experience have been all these days when the markets uh, have been going uh, tremendously high uh, uh, we were uh, running uh, these exchanges uh with a merely very nimbler uh you know workforce on premise uh which which was nearly less than you know 5 to 10% of the people used to be on the floor uh and 95 to uh percent people are working remote and uh i don't think that this is going to uh continue in the post pandemic scenario where Uh, there are various kinds of burnout are there with the staff uh, in terms of uh, people are now traveling uh, to office to have the same experience what they used to have uh, post uh, you know uh, the pre pandemic stage and uh, so uh, there will be a challenge that uh, whether it should be a 60 40 model or 30 70 model or 50 50 model but my understanding is it is going to be a hybrid model and uh, it will be uh, uh, you know largely it will be uh, you know 40 uh, percent work from uh, home and 60 percent on premise uh, this is going to be the uh, most uh, optimistic model and uh, going forward the challenges will be while some of the people will be uh, on premise and uh, they would like to get into the uh, meeting rooms while there will be a, some of the colleagues who will be sitting remotely working from homes so we have to be as a equal opportunity employer or fair and equitable processes uh, which have to be implemented across so everyone has to be continue to be digital savvy so that will be the biggest challenge that we don't do away with the our digital habits which we have got the digital habits need to continue uh, where uh, all our uh, interactions enterprise interactions corporate uh, communications corporate interactions continue to be fully digital i think uh, th- th- these are, this is the key and uh, of course whatever we have achieved uh, in terms of uh, digitalization digital transformation or uh, or at cloud adoptions or automations i think this is going to grow only uh, i think there is a no uh no stopping no looking back uh, nobody can stop uh, all the the this transformation uh, coming on the way because people have realized uh, that unless uh, they uh, go for adoption of these uh, their growth are going to be hampered uh, so therefore uh, i don't see the any challenges on that front thank you mr basin for your time and for taking us through your journey as a digital and operations leader at one of asia's top exchanges and uh, for telling us what you've been doing to lead digital transformation uh, providing insights into how transformation should be led in bfs organizations by leveraging multi cloud and finally for explaining so well how the future of cloud uh, should look like Thank you for being here on this uh, series that we at BQ Prime are bringing to our audiences in association with Oracle.